Hey, what's up, hello? Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emma. And if you're not new here, my name is still Emma. I am very excited for this video. I am here to not only bake something that's gonna taste really good, but I'm also here to give you guys my advice. The other day I put on my Instagram story asking you guys to send in scenarios, situations, questions you had where you wanted my advice. So that's what I'm here to give today. I went through and screenshotted a few of your guys' responses. Obviously not all of them because A, there was a lot and B, I haven't experienced everything so I can't offer advice on everything. So as I am answering your guys' questions, we're also going to bake some cookies. You cannot see that in front of me there's a beater, a bowl, the ingredients, the measuring cups and measuring spoons. And we're just going to do some baking. I made these cookies in my last vlog and um, they're really tasty. Now they're all gone. And so I need to make more. So that's what we're going to do. So I'll link the recipe down below for you guys. I was hoping to be able to do some of my hair out, but I need to tie it back because I don't think anyone in my family wants to eat my hair. I have also kicked my family out of the living area to film this. So we need to make hay while the sun's shining and get a move on. The first question we have here is my parents want me to work more. I'm doing 30 plus hours a week and doing a full-time uni degree and I can't work more because I'm already struggling with the workload. I feel like that's quite like a hard conversation to have with your parents because obviously what they're saying is coming from a place of care and a place like wanting the best for you. But maybe sit down and have a chat with them be like, hey, I understand you want me to work more hours. But if you want me to work more hours, that's going to hinder my ability to get good grades. And so I need to choose one or the other. And for the longevity of my career, I'm going to choose to maintain my current hours or reduce them and study and do my best. Hopefully that made sense. First step to the baking. I might just adjust the camera angle slightly. I didn't bring my proper tripod back with me from Hamilton. So I'm just going to adjust so you can kind of see me and what I'm doing at the same time. My head might be cut off at some points, but that's okay because you're here to hear my voice and you're here to see the cookies. It said that I need the butter. Oh, it says that I need the butter at room temperature. It is not at room temperature, so we're just gonna chuck it in the microwave real quick. Question of the day. The butter has these lines on it to mark out the 50 gram like divisions. Do you use those markers or do you actually weigh it? Because I never weigh it. While I'm doing this, next question. Flatting slash finding flatmate and uni halls. So if you are in a position to be able to, I would highly recommend going to the uni halls. Great way to make friends outside of your degree. That would be my first point. Second point, flatting. I would definitely recommend after your first year. That first year is great for making those connections and after you've made those connections, once you've kind of found your crew, then I would recommend going off and living with them. Why is this butter got... It's fine, we're gonna bake it anyway. I'm sure that it's fine. If you don't get along with the people in the first year, then you can swap out, but do not choose your group too soon in the year start looking for places too early if a place comes up for rent the landlords are going to want you to move in asap and so if you're not prepared to move in asap don't even bother looking like i've talked to a lot of people who are like in the middle of the year they're like yeah like we found a place unless the landlords like are willing like if there's someone currently in there that's not moving out till you want to move in great but you don't want to be paying rent for somewhere that you're not living with the exception of like over the summertime, obviously, because you know, sometimes you just gotta make those sacrifices and pay for a place you're not living in. It sucks, but it's fine. Choose your crew really, really carefully. I'm so blessed to be in like a flat with such amazing girls. We never have arguments, everything just runs so smoothly, and it's great, and I love it. So make sure you choose your crew very carefully. I think that that will do the job. And in that, we are putting the sugar which is half a cup of caster sugar and half a cup of brown sugar. Advice on how to financially prepare for uni. Make sure that you do put a little bit of thought into it, but you don't need a whole heap of thought. Savings are great, especially if you're not going to be working, then they're really, really good and really useful. Keeping in mind, like you will have to pay bonds and things if you're flatting or staying in the halls. Pick up work wherever you can. I feel like, yes, uni is expensive, but it's only as expensive as you make it. For me, I feel like I make it pretty affordable because I'm not one who goes out and drinks. I don't go out and spend 20 bucks on dinner. I choose to sit in the cold in my thermals rather than putting on the heat pump, like things like that. So there are ways that you can save money. So I would recommend that's kind of the way I do it. But yeah, again, a part-time job is a really good idea. I managed to do roughly 11, 12 hours a week on top of my studies. And I think that that is a good amount without interfering too much with your actual studies. Oh, whoopsies. And before I answer the next question, I'm just gonna beat this up because it's gonna be really noisy. 
Okay, this is already looking better than the ones I made the other day. Add egg and vanilla. I'm just gonna check the egg because we get free range eggs and we got some eggs the other day from one of our friends' farms and um, they just haven't been quite right, so I'm just gonna check it. My flatmates always make fun of me, but I always check eggs, also because I don't want shells in my food. Right, the egg is good, so we're gonna... I love how this beater on the first setting is more like powerful than our beater at the flat on like its highest setting. That is how we are looking so far. Next question. How to get the motivation to study when you're stressed with life problems? Take breaks when you need them. Do not push yourself. Obviously understand that there is a workload, but do not stress yourself out. No assignment is worth more than your mental health. Just remember that. Sift in flour and baking powder. Flour and baking powder. Flour and baking powder. If you have made it this far in the video, comment down below if you're in lockdown how much baking you have done this lockdown. Right. Cup of flour, that was the most illogical way of doing that, but that's fine. Next question. Don't know what to do after high school. Are there other options other than uni or polytech? Absolutely. I feel like there's this massive stigma around having to go to university. I saw actually an American, I don't even know who she was, it was just an American girl at college. I saw she was hit with the same question from an American point of view. She said, come and decide what you want to do later. In my opinion, I think that that is not a good idea. If you think uni or politics for you, awesome, go ahead. But if not, do not feel the pressure of society to go. Think about what sort of job like you might want to work in, you could become like a retail manager or something. There's a lot of jobs you can get without any qualifications where you can then work your way up to a role that someone with a qualification could also get, but you just don't have to waste your time and money getting the qualification, you know? Ah, someone's got a wooden spoon. I'm gonna try and mix it with this. Next question, how to cope with stress of exams and motivation. So much like the studying one with the mental health, definitely pace yourself. I got stuck in this rut in year 11 when I was studying for my external. That the first time I had so much motivation. I was so excited to like get into studying and like be a big kid. Then year 12 rolled around. Motivation was a little bit lower. Then year 13 rolled around and I had no motivation whatsoever. So I think just do what you can. Try and do it in like 30 minute lots. So do it for 30 minutes, 10 minute break. 30 minutes, 10 minute break. And each 30 minutes, do something completely different. When you go back for your next 30 minutes, do a different topic. Don't go back and do the same topic you did in the last 30 minutes. Keep it fresh, keep it fun. Think of new different ways of studying. I found flashcards good. I found Learn Coach really good. But yeah, definitely pace yourself. Have good snacks. Feel your body well. Move your body as well. Add oats and chocolate and stir. How do you work through doubt in your faith going through through a bit of a rough patch in my journey. I have myself been through a little bit of a rough patch. I think the most important thing is to remember is that even though it may not feel like it, God is there, he is with you, he is before you, he is beside you, he is behind you. Seek him and you'll find him. Try and find him in every situation, I think is a really important thing to do. And make sure you're still spending time in prayer, make sure you're still spending time reading your word, make sure you're still spending time in worship and praise. Those are the really important things. One of my leaders yesterday, we had like a little leaders Zoom with the leaders of the church and one of the things he said which really stuck with me was the 15 minutes a day. So like five minutes in prayer, five minutes reading the Bible, five minutes in worship, give it a go. I mean, there's no harm in trying. How to start developing a relationship with God. I grew up in an atheist home. First of all, I would invest in a Bible. Start with the gospel. So that's the start of the first four books of the New Testament and don't be confused like I was when I started reading one and then you moved on to the next and realized it was the same story because it is the same story, just slightly different. Just like, like I said just before, spend your 15 minutes a day, so like your five minutes reading the Bible, five minutes in prayer, five minutes in worship, like roughly, and um, you'll really start to connect. Year 11, trying to stay motivated for exams, etc., but parents keep hounding me about it. How do I stay motivated through it? That's a tough one when your parents have obviously quite high expectations and you have to understand that their expectations are coming from a really loving place. I feel like that's something I've only now realized now that I'm older when you kind of look back and it's like wow like they were saying that because they love me and they care for me. Obviously mental health does need to come first so as I said before like if you can take breaks, try your hardest, tap into different resources. With your parents though it could pay to sit down and have a conversation with them about it because I know for me like discussing if I'm having mental health issues like sitting down and discussing them with mum just makes like just takes such a weight off my shoulders. Just to voice your feelings can make a big difference. So if you're in a position to be able to do that, I would encourage you to do that as well. Hating my job, but friends slash family making me stay for money. What do I do? If I was in your position, I would stay in the job you're currently in, but keep your eyes open for a, 
alternative job and then perhaps apply for said alternative job and then hand in notice at current job would be my advice. If you're not enjoying working full stop and you're in a position to not be able to work, then perhaps step back for a bit. At the end of the day, your friends and family, yes they do love you and yes they do care for you, but they're not you. So only you can make those decisions for yourself. Not knowing what to do after school slash not being sold on uni, should I go? This is quite similar to the question that I covered earlier. And if you're not set on it, don't go. Take a gap year or a gap half a year because at uni and stuff, you can actually start halfway through the year. I feel like that's something that a lot of people just don't know is that you can actually start uni in the middle of the year. If you feel like it's not for you, you know you better than anyone else. I, I would encourage you to maybe explore different options. It's interesting though, because I always thought university wasn't for me. The thought of it kind of just daunted me so much. And I was like, nah, like nah. You're not going to catch me there. And here I am. I explored a lot of different options. I explored being a guitar teacher. I explored being a travel agent. I explored being a real estate agent. I explored being a interior designer. So there are definitely so many options out there. And a lot that do not involve any further education than what you attain when you're in high school. Why did I say high school? So weird. Ooh, guess I'm going to eat it. Mm, that's yum something I prepared earlier. How do you spend less time on social media and online? What do you do to keep yourself busy? So as you guys probably know, because I feel like I talk about this way too much, but I have every Sunday I do a social media detox day. I feel like it's a nice way to end the week and start the week. Nice and refreshing, not having to worry about what anyone else is doing or thinking or saying. Normally I spend roughly, I'd say probably one and a half to two hours on social media a day. My screen time on my phone, four hours a day now it's locked down. What I do to entertain myself while I'm not on social media, I think about all the things I love to do, but that I don't prioritize. So you would have seen the other day if you saw my most recent video, I designed my dream house. I got sat down, I spent two and a half hours drawing it out. I really encourage you to either like maybe do some physical activity, go do something you wouldn't normally do. And that doesn't have to be on a dedicated social media detox day per se. I love the quote that is do more things that make you forget to check your phone. Something along those lines that's definitely not exactly how it is. It was a lot smoother than that, but like you get the idea. The thing is when you're sitting on your phone, like you're not making memories, you're literally just absorbing what everyone else is up to. And setting screen time is also a really good way of monitoring what you're up to online. I have an hour screen time limit a day on my phone for Instagram, Facebook and TikTok combined. Every day I exceed it, like don't get me wrong, but just having it there kind of makes me feel a little bit guilty for sitting there on my phone. And so if I didn't have it there, I'd probably spend way longer than I currently do. How do you manage to fit everything into your week slash find balance with uni, work and family, etc.? This is something that I get asked quite a lot. And to be honest, I don't really know how I do it, but I can offer advice on things I do that could potentially help. So that's what I'm going to do. I always write a to-do list. I know what I need to achieve in the day, but if I don't achieve it in the day, I'm not too worried. It moves to the next day and then I prioritize it from there. I always decide when I'm going to go to bed and when I'm going to wake up. That also helps to create sort of a bit of consistency, I guess you could say. I try and wake up at the same time every day during the week and then I try to wake up at the same time on the weekends. like. A different time during the week, like a little bit later, like I give myself a little bit of a sleep in. I always find like my phone is my best tool for procrastination. So if I catch myself procrastinating, I normally chuck my phone, do not disturb. Literally, sometimes I biff it across the room or if I'm sitting on the couch, I'll like throw it. Just get it away from you because it's, you're not, you, let's be honest. Most of the time, we're not actually using it for productive purposes. So let's just move it to the side. These cookies are gonna be massive. Finding the ways that you procrastinate, like identifying your procrastination tools is a really good way of increasing your productivity. Damn, that first cookie I did looks so much better than the rest of them. Last one to fit on the tray. I know you guys can't actually see what I'm doing, but trust me, these look phenomenal. That is how we're looking. I'm gonna chuck this in the oven and set myself a timer for 12 to 15 minutes. We'll do 13 minutes. I always go like one minute more than what they say. Right, last few questions. Tips for creating a strong relationship with God. Love, love, love this question. Since lockdown has begun, I feel like my relationship with God has just grown so much, having just simply just because I've had more time to sit down and be intentional with my time. First piece of advice, when you wake up in the morning, make him your first thing. Whether you're gonna sit there and pray, you're gonna sit there and read a devotion, you're gonna sit there and read your word, you're gonna chuck in some worship music. Dedicate your first little bit of your time of your day to him. When you're going to bed, same thing. Before you go to bed, pray. Put on some worship music, read your Bible. Something along those lines. Having him as your last thought of the day and your first thought of the day, game changing. I notice as well, I'm so much less anxious throughout the day if my first portion of the day is spent 
with him intentionally. Surround yourself with people who encourage you on your walk with God. That is, like, don't undervalue that. Being around Rachel and Taya at the flat, when we can have these in-depth discussions about the word, about things that God's put in our heart, just have, like, good Christian discussions. Include God in your everyday tasks. Advice to someone with social anxiety. I haven't been diagnosed with social anxiety or anything like that, but I have been in situations where I have felt this way. So I'm just gonna speak from that experience. I used to have problems with this like so much when I was a kid, to the point before like I had this fear of going into big spaces. So, like the warehouse, Mitre 10, I remember had of having a full blown meltdown outside Mitre 10 one day because I was so nervous to go in there. Same thing, like I when we used to have assemblies at school, no one actually knows this, so I'm just exposing myself here, but I used to freak out beforehand, like to myself. My advice would be deep breaths, remember that everything's gonna be okay. Remember that you've been through these situations before and today's a new day. That's what really helped me a lot, is being like, oh, I've done this before, therefore I can do it again. Don't put yourself in a situation if it's gonna make you incredibly uncomfortable, but remember, that from those situations as we grow. Even this is a learning curve for me these days where like if I know a situation is gonna make me uncomfortable and it's gonna be like a push on myself to make it happen, I do try to push myself because I know that's gonna help me to grow and overcome whatever's stopping me. All right, last question and I love this one. There's two here but they're kind of linked in together. So the first part is I need some advice for my long distance relationship. How do you keep the relationship healthy? So Owen and I did long distance when we first started dating and we're back to doing long distance again and we will be doing it for at least the next 18 months. So <laughs> the thought of that does make me wanna cry but I'm gonna pull myself together. Maintain that communication and allocating time to FaceTime or call because things can be so misunderstood by a text and it's important to make sure that you're still having that verbal conversation. Just being really intentional with your time that you do have together because I know when you're in a long distance relationship, the time that you do have together is like the best thing ever. So being really intentional with that time, planning things in advance, and also planning the next time you're going to see each other is a really good way of having something to look forward to. Also another piece of advice, the only way it's going to work is if you both want it to work. The last question and the last part of this question as well. Tips slash advice on meeting the parents, your boyfriend or your girlfriend's parents. My advice would be do not wait, do not procrastinate it. By procrastinating it, you're only going to make it more awkward. Oh, and I were very fortunate in that the day he met me, he also met my parents. And then I met Owen's parents at the next two consecutive football games that I went to of his. I met his mum at the first one, his dad at the second one. So definitely don't procrastinate that situation. Be yourself as well. I was going through these things with my mum last night, like reading some of them out to her because she's very interested in what happens on my YouTube. And we are talking about it and she's like, well... Like, you shouldn't be nervous because, like, who you're dating is, like, half of one of them and half of the other. So, like, they should be, like, the same. So, I mean, <laughs> there you go. That's another way of looking at it. Be yourself. Don't procrastinate it. And just be kind. If these guys are going to be your in-laws one day, you want to leave a good impression. But don't stress yourself out over that point because, like, if you're being yourself, then what more could they ask for? Second lot I've just gone in the oven. There was a six more cookies I could make out of the batter. I bought these over and put them over here so I could put the next lot in and I didn't really put them on very well and they've broken oh man anyway you get the idea these cookies honestly look so good i need to control myself and not eat them just yet i need to let them cool down thank you guys for watching hopefully you took something from this i mean i don't know how useful my advice is but take from what you will thank you to everyone who sent in your questions or scenarios or whatever to instagram but if you made it around the video comment a cookie emoji and let me know if you end up making the cookies send me a photo on instagram or something i'd love to see how they turned out i'll link the recipe down below but apart from that, stay safe, stay well, make someone smile, and I'll see you in my next video. At this point, she realizes that she should have just bought a proper tripod home. That was not a very pleasurable sound. She's like, mmm, what's this crunchy thing? And we're like, they're chocolate muffins, they're not meant to be crunchy. Oh no, I scrolled on the wrong bit and lost my spot. Now my fingers are dirty. I, and an, I, oh, I don't even know what to call it. My vocabulary is not thriving today. And there's a dog running towards my fence and I want to go pet it.